Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to a prayer meeting, Pine Ridge, on Wednesday night. We've got some uh, guests with us. Uh, they were here with us Sunday, the Harrises, and we're glad to have you folks back with us tonight. Welcome. Uh, folks, be filing in. Welcome to uh, those of you that are joining us uh, on YouTube as well. Uh, for those in the building, uh, I think we have a an updated prayer sheet in the back. Uh, if you didn't get one, we'll make sure that you do. We'll go through those in a moment <clears throat> and then uh, have our uh, Bible study time with Donovan, Exodus uh, chapter, looks like chapter 22. And then I invite those that will to stay back for a uh, small group prayer time. We need to keep in mind, too, that uh, this is Memorial Day weekend coming up. We'll have a, a, a special worship time on Sunday uh, with a focus on our uh, veterans and those who have uh, given so much for our freedom and our way of life. I invite you to come back on uh, Sunday for that, ahead of the Memorial Day weekend. Let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll look at the prayer sheet. Father, we come to you tonight, Lord, and we do so because you have granted it uh, an opportunity for us to. Lord, thank you that uh, we still uh, observe and conduct prayer meeting at Pine Ridge, Father. Lord, we realize uh, though uh, our prayer lives uh, uh, definitely uh, uh, could use uh, improvement I know that uh, many of us would attest to that. We recognize that it's our way, Lord, of uh, talking with you and hearing from you. And Lord, we, we know that uh, you want us to bring uh, every care and every need that we have to you, Father. And Lord, we do so not only for ourselves, Lord, but on behalf of others that we're aware of, Father. <clears throat> and we thank you for that. Uh, awesome opportunity and responsibility to do that, Lord. Father, uh, we'll look at our prayer sheet in a moment, Father, and there are many on there that uh, have been on, on that uh, sheet for a long time. And Lord, their, their needs are real. And Father, we know that you have their best interest in heart, at heart, Father. And Lord, we ask that you bless them. Lord, we ask that you'd bless this time that we have together tonight. Thank you for these who have come, Father. Lead God and direct us and forgive us, Lord, where we fall short of who you would have us to be, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, um, I'm going to kind of be working across two pages here, uh, but uh, I'll ask you when I go through the list if there are those that uh, you would uh, want us to add to the list, and we'll try to get those on there and also... People will make notes so that later in the small group time we can pray for those. Uh, Brenda, uh, this is a, a need that has been communicated by Velma Harms, stroke with a blood clot. Uh, Don Parkhurst, uh, I'm sad to uh, report that Don uh, passed on Sunday uh, evening uh, from 
injury suffered in that motorcycle wreck. Um, the good news is I spoke with his family uh, uh, during this time and asked pointedly if Don had ever accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior and was assured that he indeed had. So that's, uh, we, we can only go off of what we're told. Uh, I know Don was a, was a fine man, uh, and he had lost a daughter earlier this year. Many of you probably knew her and didn't know it. She worked for a long time at Bed Bath & Beyond. Uh, she was kind of the principal person there. But anyway, the family, I, they knew that, uh, that I had placed him on the prayer sheet here, and they wanted uh, the church to know that they are so appreciative of the prayers during this time, this uh, two-week period that their loved one had been suffering. Under cancer, Amelia still, uh, we remember her. I don't know if we'll get any updates on that, Mac, or not. Uh, Okay. Okay. So, uh, anyway, you know, cancer is an awful thing, but for a five-year-old, uh, it seems like it takes on a new level of uh, of awfulness. Tom Bentley, uh, throat cancer. Linda had shared with us uh, last week that he's uh, at the Houston Clinic doing chemo chemotherapy. Still there. Uh, Richard Bradshaw, uh, this is from Mr. Owens, uh, bone marrow cancer and uh, borderline kidney failure. Gary uh, Hunter, Linda's brother, was to go to Shands in Gainesville. Is he there? Okay, keep him in your prayers. Uh, speaking from experience, those chemo treatments are not fun appointments. Uh, so keep him in your prayers. Gary's gonna try to take another chemotherapy treatment tomorrow. Uh, Maria Jump, this is uh, Sheriff uh, Neil Jump's wife with leukemia. Uh, Trish Land, cancer. Carrie Llewellyn, this is uh, Mac's sister with breast cancer. Brenda Kent, uh, with uh, chemotherapy with uh, cancer that uh, has come back on her. Paula Spaulding, Diane's uh, friend, Pastor Chris Winford. Uh, those of you on Facebook, are you reading anything on any updates uh, on Pastor Winford? Okay. Okay. John was sharing that uh, he'd spoken with uh, a member of First Baptist, and Chris uh, is uh, in the midst of doing chemo and radiation, but having, a, understandably, a difficult time with uh, those treatments. So continue to uh, keep him in your prayers, in our prayers. Uh, Peggy Wilkerson Buchan, uh, lung cancer. Uh, under uh, sympathy and bereavement, uh, the Liz Emmelkamp family, this is, uh, she passed. This is Velma and Carl Harms' uh, relative. Uh, June the 11th, Rich and uh, Annette will be going uh, to New York for Rich's brother Donald's services. Uh, yes, John. Raymond Gaines, uh, friend of uh, fellow graduate of uh, John Craven, and uh, obviously a veteran, uh, passing away uh, today from the effects of Agent Orange. So remember the Gaines family, please. And uh, yes, the Lau family. Uh, Larry passed. Uh, what last Saturday was it, uh, Rob? The Saturday passed. Anyway, uh, 
remember that family and their loss as well. And I know that Carl had worked with Larry out at the, uh, out at the mill too, maybe others. Special prayer uh, needs for the uh, Alan Benner and Sharon Benner and the Benner family. Uh, there are just a, a lot of things going on there, a lot of moving parts, but just, uh, just know that uh, prayer is needed and appreciated for that situation. And uh, please, uh, please remember them specifically when you, uh, when you pray tonight. Heather, with uh, thoracic surgery coming up next week on the 1st of June. So remember Heather and Oz and the family there. Uh, we can, uh, didn't, we didn't get that off there, but Larry is doing well, Larry Boyette, uh, recovery from his surgery. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, he, he will uh, maybe be able to uh, supply for us a Sunday or so uh, soon. Okay, so Larry's uh, preaching again, so uh, we'll uh, we'll make contact with Larry and uh, see if we can uh, get him here for a Sunday as well. Uh, Dixie Cobb, this is uh, uh, Mike Cobb's mother, Mike and Elizabeth. Elizabeth is Alton and Arlene's uh, De Prater's daughter. Uh, her mother-in-law, Dixie, who worked out at Fletzy uh, <clears throat> in the convenience store when I was working out there, she's under hospice care now, and I haven't heard anything, uh, you know, in the last day or so concerning that. So please pray for Miss Dixie. Uh, Ken reported that Daphne was uh, doing better. Wow. Uh, 90th uh, birthday or 90th birthday for Daphne uh, doing doing okay uh, but continue to pray for her um, Heinz Clements uh, Lula Mae Dean with some uh, minor health uh, issues there uh, Bobby Emery the gentleman who uh, had the leg amputation due to diabetes but uh, was fitted for prosthesis and is learning how to use that. And uh, that's really an answer to prayer because they had told him it was going to be a year before they could do anything for him. And uh, uh, that year turned into about a week, a week, 10 days. Libby's reporting uh, a good report that Bobby uh, said as soon as he gets that leg and can uh, use it, he's coming uh, to church, and I'm sure that he'll have a few words to share uh, to the congregation and praise, uh, praise the Lord for that answered prayer. Uh, Merlene Hall, resting at home, Mer Merlene and uh, Bernard still, uh, still doing, doing pretty good. Nancy and Elliot Harrell. Ruth Hopkins at home, Ed and Juanita Hurst. Uh, Ed is scheduled, or hopefully they'll both be here, but Ed's scheduled to preach on Father's Day uh, in June. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, Ms. Mulligan, John's uh, mother <clears throat> over in Pensacola, um, there at the, uh, the assisted living facility. Shauna, this is Ann Loftus' daughter. Uh, Jamie Wolf's uh, niece injured a uh, knee in a car accident. Uh, Pastor James is home and uh, recovering. Someone told me uh, over the weekend that they saw him out at Cracker Barrel uh, having a meal, so uh, he's he's doing pretty good. But I think he, you know, I think he's trying to minimize, you know, his uh, his appearances with crowds and things like that right now, but. I can tell you when I visited with him right after he first got back to Brunswick, he looked great. I mean, he looked absolutely wonderful. And I know he, he thanks the church for prayers, and he's looking forward to being able to come back and be with us, and we're looking forward to that too. And at Stats and family with some uh, issue, health issues and some other things, our Supreme Court, uh, all of our government, uh, not just the Supreme Court, but all 
branches of government and particularly um, in this season of, of election. Uh, keep, uh, keep all associated with that process in, in prayer daily. Uh, Al Verheyen, this is Elizabeth's husband, Al, uh, serious health problems, very serious health problems. Carolyn Vest's uh, grandson and nephew, uh, Bernadette Weiss, still uh, uh, grieving loss of her sister and some health issues, and Wilbert and Sandra Wiggins, who are suffering with COVID. Of course, Sandra just came off of a, almost a, a two to three week bout with pneumonia, and uh, then this jumped on her. The uh, transition team and the pastor search committee, continue to keep them in your prayer uh, as they uh, work and pray and, and, you know, and, and seek the Lord's uh, guidance in that process. And then also the Texas school shootings. Folks, I don't know how many more of these we're going to have to have in this nation. Uh, they, you know, they just get worse and worse. Uh, every time one of them occurs, whether it's a school shooting or a supermarket or whatever. Um, you know, don't let your guard down and think that Brunswick, Georgia can't be impacted or affected by these things. It's not, it's not city specific. It's not big city specific. It's just a vein of evil and, and, and just terrible uh, situations and things out there that uh, people um, are involved with these things and we see the results and it's heartbreaking. I, I hope we don't get desensitized to the fact just because we don't know them personally or it's not in our area. It, it would be so easy to do so. Uh, when they put the pictures of these, uh, these people who were killed on the screen, it, it just has to you know, pull at you. And we want to pray for all those involved with that, the families, the law enforcement people who responded, the, the officials who are having to make, uh, make decisions and policy and things to try to address the situation. What about others? Uh, I know Jane had some uh, surgery last week. Donovan, is she uh, still recovering okay? Okay, so over the course of about three weeks, she's going to have uh, several surgical procedures, but as long as they accomplish what they're supposed to, we'll be grateful for that. John. Okay. John sharing a praise, uh, the hospital uh, allowed uh, John, who is a Gideon, uh, to uh, distribute 242 Bibles, New Testaments, to uh, the uh, hospital staff and others there so that people will have access to God's Word. You never know uh, when someone will pick that up and be impacted by it. So thank you for that. I have a couple others, uh, holdovers from uh, last week that I'll, I'll just mention. Uh, uh, the COVID outbreak in St. Bede, I hope I'm saying that right, or St. Bede uh, Catholic School, so hopefully they're rebounding uh, from that. Uh, Joan Ligon was uh, trying to, to work out things to get Johnny uh, home from, a, uh, from the hospice facility. I don't know if that has happened yet. Uh, Rosalie Skinner, Ms. Thaxton, what's the update? 
Okay. Okay. Is she home or in the hospital? Home? Okay. Jimmy Taylor with open heart surgery. I think uh, the grace uh, provided that. Um, and then, of course, it's the end of school. Uh, this week uh, pretty much uh, wraps it up for the students. And, uh, you know, their summer begins. Uh, teachers and administrators have uh, some more things to, to complete, but uh, the summer's upon us. And, uh, you know, thank the Lord that this, this year, this past school year, uh, there were no closures, uh, unlike the year before with COVID. Uh, so that, the, you know, I know we didn't have to become teachers at home with our grandkids on the computers and that type of thing. So, uh, you know, our, our thanks or my thanks definitely goes out to all the, the school administrators and the teachers and everyone associated with educating and transporting our students uh, to and from school. Thank you uh, for all that you've done. We pray for you folks. Yeah, I've got I've got him yeah over. Okay. Okay. Mr. Johnson, George Johnson not able to uh, take those treatments. So he has pancreatic cancer, and he's at home now. So please pray for him and his family during this time. Are there others? Okay. Unspoken, of course, uh, all over the room. Let me pray just a moment, and then Don will come. And then again, uh, afterwards, as we break into small groups, you'll have time to, uh, to pray more specifically for each one of these. Lord, a long list. Each week, each time we meet, a long list, Father, that grows longer of people with special needs. Lord, you're not overwhelmed at all by them. And Lord, we trust you and bring them to you and ask, Lord, that you would minister to them, Lord, as only you can. Father, love on these people and on their situations. And Lord, the individuals who are afflicted, Father, and those who are caregivers and the families, Father, and the network of friends. Lord, minister to all of us, Father, we pray. We lift them up to you, Lord, and ask that you be glorified and honored. We pray, Father, for those who are in leadership positions in our government, Father. Minister to them and speak to them, Father, Lord, and lead them to make decisions and policies, Father, that uh, are in the best interest, Father, as you would have it for your people. Lord, we pray especially tonight, Father, for those who are the victims, the direct victims, Father, of this uh, senseless slaughter in Texas, Father. Lord, we, we hear about and have to deal with too many of these too often, Father. Lord, have mercy upon us, Father. And Lord, have mercy upon of the families, Lord, who are grieving, even at this hour when we meet. We lift their need up to you, Father, and ask that you bless them in a special way. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to pray. We thank you for the praise that John shared in distributing your word uh, to the hospital, Father. We pray that it, uh, the message of your word would go out and people's lives would be impacted positively because of it. Lord, we pray for these, uh, Father, who can't take treatments. We pray, Father, that you would be merciful to them. Lord, just uh, be, with, be with us now, Father. Bless us as we hear your word explained, Father. Use Donovan in a special way. I pray, Father, Lord, as he comes that, uh, that we would hear uh, what he has to say, Father. Pray for those needs, uh, for all those people that are watching on YouTube, Father. You know those too, though we may not, Father, and you can address them. Thank you for loving on us, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Donovan, please. <clears throat> Uh, 
Our uh, study and everything that we will be doing tonight will be in Exodus 22, be a continuance of uh, expounding on the Ten Commandments that God had given the Moses to give to the Israelites. Last week in chapter 21, uh, we went through the fifth and the sixth uh, commandments, dealing uh, honor your father and mother in the fifth, and in the sixth, uh, you shall not murder. In tonight, in Exodus 21, the law concerning servants. And you can find uh, other reference to this in Deuteronomy 15, verses 12 through 18. In the ancient world, poor people often sold themselves in exchange for food, money, or housing. These laws are designed to keep the service from being misused by a bad master. Uh, last week, we did note, too, that uh, some of the parents uh, would sell uh, their daughters and stuff to have food and housing and all. And there was laws set up concerning that on the redemption. If uh, the master was not pleased with her or she was not uh, betrothed to uh, his son. In uh, verse 1 of chapter 22, if a man steals an ox or a sheep and slaughters it or sells it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. If the thief is found breaking in and he is struck so that he dies, there shall be no guilt for his bloodshed. If the sun has risen on him, there shall be guilt for his bloodshed. He should make full restitution if he has nothing. Then he shall be sold for his theft. If the theft is certainly found alive in his hand, whether it is an ox or a donkey or sheep, he shall restore double. On this here, uh, uh, Billy, you could probably uh, give us a little more insight. You know, we're seeing that if it's nighttime and the, uh, the guy was breaking in and he was uh, murdered, they was found no guilt. But if it's in daylight where they could see the individual, they was uh, set up that they would be... Uh, guilt for the demise of the individual. You know, the, uh, I think the, the thought here is that if, if, if you can see the person, if you're not taken by surprise necessarily, that there should be every opportunity uh, to to invoke a, a level of force that's reasonable to the situation. Um, if it's nighttime, you know, you assume that uh, you're asleep, uh, the household's asleep, and they're taken like that, then there's the element of surprise, and, mm -hmm. you know, you can, you can deal with, uh, uh, you know, deadly force, if you will. Yeah. 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 Well, he said at night there was no light. <laughs> no. But, but, you know, what they're trying to, I, I think it's, it's what the lead-in says. The Lord, you know, it, it's not just like an old west where, you know, everybody's strapped on a gun and you went around killing people, you know, almost like you'd go to lunch or to dinner or to breakfast anytime somebody looked at you the wrong way. They're... There had to be reasonableness, a level of reasonableness that fit the crime or the mm -hmm. situation. You couldn't just kill somebody for anything that they did. Yeah. And also, too, thinking uh, in that line and everything, that uh, in our laws today, that applies to the way our laws were set up. Uh, yeah, uh, and maybe that's what you were getting at. Again, we're founded on Judeo-Christian values, and these are part of that that whole thing that uh, come, comes under that heading. And we see in our criminal justice system, though it seems like it's being attacked day in and day out now, that a lot of these things track their origin back to the Bible. That's where they come from. Yeah. 
in uh, verse uh, 5, if a man causes a field or vineyard to be grazed and lets loose an, his animal and it feeds on another man's field, he shall make restitution from the best of his own field and the best of his own vineyard. If fire breaks out and catches in thorns so that the stack grain, standing grain, or the field is consumed, he who kindled the fire shall surely be, uh, make restitution. If a man delivers to his neighbor money or articles to keep, and it is stolen out of the man's house, if the thief is found, he shall pay double. If the thief is not found, then the master of the house shall be brought to the judges to see whether he has put his own hand into his neighbor's goods. In verse 9, for any kind of trespass, whether it concerns an ox, a donkey, a sheep, or clothing, or for any kind of lost thing which another claims to be his, the cause of both parties shall come before the judges, and whoever, whomever the judges condemn shall pay double to his neighbor. So in these laws are set up as, as it's, uh, the Lord is explaining it even deeper to uh, Moses to tell the people he's laying everything out and as uh, Billy brought out, it's uh, going back to the basis of our own uh, laws that we have in our land here. And how after all these years, how these things are still in effect. In verse 10, if a man delivers to his neighbor a donkey, an ox, a sheep, or any animal to keep, and it dies, is hurt or driven away, no one seeing it, then an oath of the Lord shall be between them both, that he has not put his hand into his neighbor's goods, and the owner of it shall accept that, and he shall make it good. But if in fact it is stolen from him, he shall make restitution to the owner of it. If it is torn to pieces by a beast, then he shall bring it as evidence, and it shall not make good for what was torn. In 14, if a man borrows anything from his neighbor and it becomes injured or dies, the owner is not, and the owner is not being with it, he shall surely make it good. If the owner is with it, he shall not make it good, for it was hired, and it came for its hire. So we see in this here that they uh, covering any aspects, and I know uh, uh, one Sunday evening we had an individual come uh, by the church here that he had borrowed a trailer uh, from uh, his friend, brand new trailer, and somebody stole it. And he was uh, concerned and wanted to know if we had any uh, video that might help them at all. And so we see here, from what it's saying here, that uh, man was responsible for, for it while it was in his possession. Moral and ceremonial principles in uh, verse 16. If a man entices a virgin who is not betrothed and lies with her, he should surely pay the bride price for her to be his wife. If the father utterly refuses to give her to him, he shall pay money according to the bride price of virgins. Capital punishment guidelines. You shall not permit a saucer to live. In verse 19, whoever lies with an animal shall surely be put to death. In verse 20, he who sacrifices to any god except to the Lord only, he shall be utterly destroyed. So on these capital punishment guides, they're pretty, pretty close. And I know if you go back in, in history, uh, the early history of our uh, nation, that uh, those that practice uh, witchcraft and everything, they was uh, tied to a post and, and burned at the stake. And uh, now, how to deal with the helpless. In verse 21, you shall neither mistreat a stranger nor oppress him, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall not affect any widow or fatherless child. If you afflict them in any way, and they cry at all to me, I will surely hear their cry, and my wrath will become hot, and I will kill you with a sword. Your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. Donovan, one, one thing, and we see it a lot in our Sunday school lessons, 
and probably one reason the Lord takes such a, a hard stance on this, in their society back then, uh, which was male-dominated, um, if a woman was a widow or a child was an orphan, they had no protector whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And those that would uh, take things would abuse them and take advantage of everything that they had. So they had no advocate. So the Lord says, in the absence of a human advocate, I'm their ultimate advocate. Mm -hmm. And you better not, better not uh, mess with them and mistreat them. Yeah. It's amazing when you, know, when you look at all these laws and uh, how that they was explained and set out, we see that it's uh, a lot of detail uh, that has gone into it and even how even today in our society how these things are still effective and all. In verse 25 it says, if you lend money to any of my people who are poor among you, you shall not be like a money lender to him. You shall not charge him interest. If you ever take your neighbor's garment as a pledge, you shall return it to him before the sun goes down. For that is his only covering. It is his garment for a skin. What will he sleep in? And it will be that when he cries to me, I will hear, for I am gracious. We look at these things here and... and uh, the Lord is telling them that when you loan your own people uh, money, the Hebrew people, in the land, promised land, you was not to take and charge interest to it. And it was all right to charge an interest uh, on your money and stuff that was loaned to somebody that was not part of the uh, tribe of the children of Israel. And too often... Uh, Today we see uh, instance, I know when I was in the service, we had to watch because there was some people that would loan money out and then they was charging a pretty hefty fee. And uh, we had to take these people and, and uh, bring them for uh, the military justice and all because of the things that they was doing was uh, illegal. The, talking about uh, the individual and his cloak, uh, if he took and, and give his outer covering for uh, some food or anything like that, you was required by the Lord to take and give that back to him because when it come nighttime, he had to have something to keep him warm and something to sleep in. I'm going to share this story, and I'm not. I'm not coming down on you know a particular business. It's just something that uh, that I found years ago. Uh, I was mowing my grass at my former residence up around the road, and people were you know all the time dropping pieces of paper and bottles and stuff. So I saw one that I was picking up. Uh, I picked up, and it was a ticket from a pawn shop where someone had uh, pawned a ring, I think it was a ring, for, I think it was $100. You know what the rate of interest was on paying back that money? 300%. 300%. I think that's what he's speaking against right there. There and uh, around a lot of the Navy towns and everything, uh, they had a particular uh, pawn shop that was all the time loaning money at uh, high rates and all. And it used to be that everybody said, you can owe the big O. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what they was doing. They was taking them for everything they could get. In uh, verse 28, you shall not reveal God nor curse a ruler of your people. You shall not delay to offer the first of your ripe produce and your juices. The first born of your, born of your sons you shall give to me. Likewise, you shall do with your oxen and your sheep. It shall be with its mother seven days, and on the eighth day you shall give it to me. And you shall be holy men to me. 
You shall not eat meat torn by the beast in the field. You shall throw it to the dogs. In this, in the firstborn, uh, firstborn uh, males of the family, they would go uh, to the priest, and there was a, uh, uh, a small fee that they would take and pay, and they'd take that child and come back uh, with them. We've seen where uh, in Samuel, he was uh, taken and given to the Lord and not redeemed by his mother, but left in services there to uh, serve the Lord because of a uh, vow that she had made to the Lord that if she was to have a son, that she would give him back <clears throat> to the Lord for service, for what she had done for, for her. The other thing, too, in talking about uh, the offerings of your uh, ripe produce and your juices and everything, uh, likewise in our tithe and our offering, it should be right off the top and not delayed because it seems like if you take and delay it, uh, somehow that money seems to kind of go somewhere else instead of where it uh, should have been intended to go to our Lord and Savior and all. As we go through this, we're going to see more expounding on the law that the Lord has given to Moses. Yes, Billy. Don, I want to ask a question. Uh, look at verse 28. It says, You shall not revile God, nor curse a ruler of your people. Um, and You know, I relate it. I think it's... Uh, it's over in uh, Romans that talks about the institution of government mm -hmm. and uh, what the Lord has to say about that. I don't, my question is, I, I don't think he's talking about just a, a Jewish ruler over Jewish people. Perhaps he's expanding this because we know that they, they had good kings, mm -hmm. bad kings, and they had non Jewish kings that were rulers over, over the people. He says, do not curse the ruler of your people. Uh, and I know we get upset and we get uh, disappointed and you know, we get fractious with you know, whether it's the president, or the governor, or the city council person or whatever. But is he saying here that you know, we can be upset and all that, but we can't direct hate and vitriol and, you know, just that type of attitude toward those who are leading us, even if they're bad leaders. You know, because the Lord tells us there, and uh, the reference you was making there in the New Testament, that uh, the Lord gives us uh, leadership, whether it be good or bad, all leadership, the Lord says, I have given. And we're to pray for our leadership so that we'll have good leadership. And it also goes on to say that we should conduct ourselves in such a way that does not bring the wrath of that leadership down upon us and all. So we're held accountable for these things. And uh, uh, through these uh, different elections and everything, some of the things that said about different ones and, and all that would be in contrary to what is written here. And all. I'm going to make a point about all that because I listened to a preacher on uh, Just hang on just a minute, Rob, because we want our uh, people that are on the outside <laughs> to be able to hear the comment also. But anyway, we are to respect our leaders. But there is nothing wrong with praying against evil that evil will be exposed and will be dealt with. There's nothing wrong. With doing that. He's not saying that, that, that verse on the front. No, I, but when we think of our leaders today, yeah. and we're supposed to respect and pray for them, <clears throat> but at the same time, we don't really know what's going on half the time <clears throat> or where their hearts are. And so, well, we kind of know. I mean, it's kind of obvious where their hearts are. It's not with God, <clears throat> many of them. But um, I'm just saying that it's okay to pray that against evil, wherever it is. Absolutely. <clears throat> so. With our uh, leaders and praying for them, 
that uh, we have uh, good leadership. And one of the things, too, that I pray that our leaders, that their eyes would be open to the truth of God's Word. And if that happens, we'll see a great change in our leadership and all. And we notice that uh, as we look into other countries and see these different things in the news that is taking place, we see where a lot of these laws that are explained here are being uh, taken over by the people and, and that they're uh, doing things that they shouldn't do. Uh, ourselves, when we look at these things in the basis of the law, and then we see the new laws that are passed in our society today, uh, we try and, and do our best to take and, and follow these uh, laws as the Lord gives us. And, and there's times that I have to ask the Lord, you know, Lord, you've got to help me with this to uh, understand it and to be able to follow through on it and all. But with our elections coming up in November, uh, we really need to pray earnestly and deeply for the leadership in this nation because whatever comes out of that is what we're going to be dealing with for the next few years. And it's not only going to affect us and our generation, but it's going to affect our children, our grandchildren, and all as time goes on. Any uh, questions or other comments? Okay, we're going to break up into our... Uh, prayer groups and all at this time. Thank you. Okay, if you will, uh, break into your prayer groups.